Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eva beloved and endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the Mike Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, and her worldwide on GL7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for some great gift ideas, including t shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot more, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise. Go to Mike Widener Show podcast on Amazon. And for more great gift ideas, including t shirts, as well as some pop sockets, tank tops, and a lot more. And for great books by me and Molson Zia, go to Amazon.com and check out books like Missing. Once wrinkles and more, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Me and Most and Zia store. Make sure you order today. And don't forget to support the Mike Wagner Show on the Mike Wagner Show.com. Also on Anchor FM slash support and also PayPal at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you give today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who is out of um, New York City based. And he is a director, dramatur, singer, songwriter. And um, he graduated from Yale, went to New York City and uh, studied theater and film and um he also went to L.A. to uh, be in TV networks and uh, other film projects. And he also uh, appeared in Broadway in Inherit the Wind and known for um, Summy Wise, Angels and Demons, Great Expectations. And he's also a, a singer. He's got a new song out called Look Out But a Chelly Girl. And we'll be playing at the uh, end of the audio interview. We'll talk more about that. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown New York City, the very, very multi-talented Fritz Michelle. Fritz, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Appreciate well, it's that. great to have you on board as well, too. So you're based on New York City. You're a singer, dramaturg, and a songwriter, director as well. And you graduated from Miel, and you went to New York City to uh, get on Broadway right. and film. You moved down to Los Angeles for some bigger projects. And you also appeared in Broadway and Inherit the Wind. You're also known for um, Summer Weiss, Angels and Demons, Great Expectations. You also have a new song out called Look Out by the Chelly Girl, which is amazing and streaming. We'll have you talk about that. And before we get into all that, Fritz, tell us how I first got started. How, how I first got started? Yes. Yeah, in life? <laughs> wow, well, uh, my parents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can go the way back machine. You know yeah, how I mean, it's like back in the back cartoons, the way yeah. back machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, well, you know, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, look, I've always had a pretty active imagination, I guess. So it depends where you where you want to, where you want to, where you want to start. Um, you know, that's, uh, my, I've always been a performer, so that's, uh, and I've always been a storyteller. So that's really how I arrived at writing these songs. Um, you know, I, I can't, I can't study history in college. I wrote for an environmental magazine. I was up to date on those types of issues. I got into the film business. I, you know, spent years as an actor. I worked in movies. I worked at directed plays. I traveled the country in plays, I've toured, I started playing in bands. Um, let's see, I wrote some movie scripts. I've uh, uh, done a lot of things along the way. Learned to play the guitar, learned to play the bass guitar, started playing in bands, started playing music, uh, worked, worked Broadway, off-Broadway, downtown New York, East Coast, West Coast movies, um, television, uh, internet, cable log, and uh, now I'm here, And uh, but then, this COVID thing came along and I decided I had to start writing some songs because you couldn't get together with people anymore. And I was all by myself and uh, locked up. And that's where 
really the songwriting muse came to me, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I feel extremely fortunate about that and a difficult, difficult period for so many people, myself included. And, uh, but, you know, every uh, silver lining's got a, something good, good come out of these things. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing uh, for the rest of your career? Uh, gosh, it was a, a single moment. I could have gone, there's so many, but I can tell you one great, a great thing I was thinking about this afternoon since we're in New York. I was standing outside. I was, I was a big Grateful Dead fan back in the, uh, 19, oh, in the late eighties, early nineties. Oh, and, wow. uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I'd probably go to see the Grateful Dead at Madison Square Garden the night, one night, the next night I happened to go to the theater with my mother to see Angels of America, the, uh, Broadway play. It was the, you know, it's a revival they made a movie of it hbo this was the original production by tony kushner and um the great actors in it and um uh, joe mantello is a huge director now and everything and uh and anyway the, we're going through the play and i go out at intermission to have a cigarette back in the day and who should be standing outside also having cigarette? jerry garcia oh my gosh see, yeah right i'd seen him with twenty thousand people the night before and probably seen him the night before that and here is one of my musical idols standing next to me for having Ed both having a smoke outside. Uh, he's there on their night off. I'm guess I'm on the my night off of whatever I was doing. I was pretty starstruck, but that was a that was a moment where I was like, wow, this is uh, that guy's a great musician, and boy, music's a great thing. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, speaking of great music, along with Jerry Garcia and the great Grateful Dead and um, also being Broadway and everything. Who are some of your favorite actors and actresses and um, also musicians and singers growing up? Oh, gosh, I, you know, I pull from all kinds of things. I mean, I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, I, I love Lou Reed. He's a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. I, you know, I think that that kind of storytelling is, is unbelievable. The little human vignettes, the, you know, the great, the, the people who tell human stories to me are the most interesting you know, you know, we were, we were talking about Gordon Lightfoot and the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, you know, people could bring vivid details to light in, in, in interesting ways, I think is really, that influenced me the most. When you, then when you think about musicians, you know, I think about, um, you know, I think about David Bowie too, who also oh, interesting yeah, well, ways, amazing, uh -huh. yeah, amazing, and an amazing storyteller, you know, um, I think of, uh, I think of Bell and Sebastian, the Scottish group I like a lot, uh, that, that talk, tells little urban stories in the, most, in the most melodious way, you know, really, where they, they find the flow. And then I think of jazz great, great. See, I started playing jazz a few years ago, which really helped me learn about songwriting because jazz, even though much of it is improv, there's a certain structure to it. And I'm thinking of Song from My Father, for example, one of the first songs I ever learned, um, which has this amazing bass line, Horace Silver. So he's a huge influence because guess what? That melody tells a story just in and of itself. It's an um, amazing little piece of music and uh, deeply influenced me. Wow, that is something. Of course, we're sometimes on the subject of the jazz. What are your thoughts on Miles Davis's classic Bitches Brew? <laughs> Man, you know, Miles Davis is so awesome. I saw him play at the Greek Theater in 1988 in Berkeley, California, and but he, and he was a showman though. That's what I always remember about music. And I'm being a performer because I can remember him coming out and, you know, he's legendarily cool, right? And, uh, but he, he was still doing like a super 80s thing. I remember he had this like, uh, like purple and red and yellow outfit on, big shades and um, playing at the Greek Theater in Berkeley. But he, he had so much style. I mean, you know, like that's, and then and Miles Davis is so amazing. And that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about jazz. I mean, these melodies are, timeless and there's so much hidden in the notes in between the notes and in the silence so it's a classic for a reason hmm. cool and, cat, that guy and it does sound like a classic as well too we'll talk about your soon-to-be classic along with your experience on uh broadway more being director dramaturg singer songwriter or more but first listen to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com powered by soundweb studios Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960.
It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and Evo. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Evo Love and endorsed by Howard's Lovers, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on themikewidenershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms like Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, and a podcast platform near you and your favorite. And also, take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow us on The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, including T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, and more, go to Amazon.com and check out The Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, including t-shirts hoodies also pop sockets some other great books by me and Molson zia like missing once and more go to amazon.com and check out the me and Molson zia store make sure you order it today and don't forget to support the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com also on anchor fm and paypal make sure you do it today we're here with a wonderful um multi-talented gentleman from new york city he's a director dramaturg singer songwriter and um you graduate from me out to new york city and um he got in the film and TV, and he also moved to Los Angeles on bigger projects. So let's talk about your acting as well, too, and uh, going from Yale to New York City to L.A. and back to New York. And you uh, also appeared uh, in Inherit the Wind and more as well, too. So talk about, talk about that. Well, you know, I was, uh, I was yeah, I was, uh, I was an actor for, for many years. Uh, you know, my, I'm, I'm French, so I played a lot of French guys. I doctors, lawyers, financial guys, uh, because I can talk like this with the accent, et je parle couramment le français. So that's, uh, you know, as a, I think as a, any artist, you learn to tell your story that way. So um, that was that was my kind of show, show busy life in LA. And I got to work with some incredible people. You know, I was, uh, yeah, like you said, I'm, um, you know, I, I, the Demons and Syriana and some great film directors, you know, great, great directors, Ron Howard, Steve Gagan, who wrote Traffic. Um, he made this great movie. Syriana, I don't know if you know, it's about the oil, uh, it's still very relevant today, Midi- oh, East yes, uh, oil thriller. Yes. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? Um, mm-hmm. I had a part in that movie. Um, you know, I did an amazing episode at ER uh, where I was playing a Doctors Without Borders guy, which was interesting because again, after, you know, same same thing today. You know, we still face these humanitarian crises. It's funny to look back. I mean, as an actor, you get to do so many interesting, different things. That there's that old job. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. That's what I always loved about. That's what I always loved about the gig. I, I say that myself too. It's like, you know, I am a doctor, but I'm not a doctor. I play one on TV. I hear that all the time, and I think you resonate with just about everybody. Yeah, right. I, I could cure the sick right now, although I'm not licensed. But people still believe anway. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, I guess uh, we're all myth makers in our own way. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that either. You know, like, uh, yeah, you and I are sitting back here eating peeled grapes and having a current all the time, right? Oh, there you go. Yes. And of course, you've uh, you've uh, you've been in those, um, you know, movies we've mentioned as well, too. And um, you play some interesting roles. What would you say the most inter- interesting role um, has been as well for you? Well, it's pretty interesting. I made a I uh, made a movie. That I- really came full circle back in 2000 about the life of Ignaz Semmelweis, who was a medical pioneer. I played Semmelweis, who discovered the principles of modern day hand washing. He was really he was working in Vienna in 1863 and realized that if you could, uh, women were dying in childbirth at alarming rates. One out of three mm. would die in the hospitals. Really nasty stuff. Doctors would go from doing operations and autopsies to delivering babies, if you can imagine, and without washing their hands. It was oh like a gosh. like a butcher's coat, so you can imagine the infection. Some of us realized if you if you could get rid of the smell of infection, you could reduce the infection rate. He ordered his students and everyone in the hospital to scrub their hands with lime. Mortality dropped ninety percent. The doctors didn't want to listen to him. They thought um, the some of us reflexes deny uh, you know could go against you know uh, conventional wisdom. Um, it's very hard to break the to get new ideas across and. Semmelweis was drummed out of the hospital, died in a lunatic asylum. Wow. And it wasn't until 30 years later that really Pasteur and Lister, who get the credit for modern day antiseptic handwashing, 
is, um, but it really goes back to Semmelweis 30 years before many lives could have been saved. And that was a really fascinating project, fascinating role, fascinating person, and very relevant today because hand washing, um, you know, has been at the center of this, of us getting through this pandemic. Um, and weirdly enough, the short just screened at the Queen's drive-in mm-hmm. with 12 Monkeys uh, with Bruce Willis, uh, uh, directed by Terry Gilliam, another old favorite of mine. So I went to the drive-in last year, uh, last, just this fall, so just saw the movie again at a drive-in movie theater, which was a, a hoot. Went with my mom. Oh, yeah, I love drive-ins. I remember that, and especially when you drive yeah. through, you could see the uh, pictures some people pull over. It's like, oh, I can figure this out. You just watch the movie. Don't worry about the audio. And, uh, oh, pass the popcorn, please. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. But it was kind of amazing to get the audio beamed in through your car. I, I, you know, I hadn't been to a drive-in forever. And I think it was one of those things that came back during the pandemic because the movie theaters had to get shut down. Mm-hmm. People still want to go to movies. So it was actually really cool to go to this drive-in. And I was, it was, it was amazed. I was amazed at how well it worked. Mm-hmm. It like, now, we should be doing more of this. Now, what, now as you say, it was a local drive-in or was it one of the makeshift ones like they did with uh, Yankee Stadium and uh, Citibank Field and- um, Yeah, no, or, it was, or it was like was giant, one, Or even like Giant Stadium, was it? They called Giant Stadium or is it like MetLife or something? Or is it the Snoop? Yeah, Park? no, it was, a, it, was a, it was, a I guess, a makeshift one. It was sponsored. It was right next to Shea Stadium. That's the city field in New York. It was, uh, you know, in the parking lot. Cre- it was created by the Museum of the Moving Image who was sponsoring it and Rooftop Films. And, and because movie theaters were closed, their normal screenings couldn't happen. And so they started putting putting together this driving series. And it was really well attended. People people were there and there were vendors selling food. It was an incredible experience actually to see a parking lot full of people in New York. You know, you felt like you were out of a different decade, you know, <laughs> but you know, it was a very old fashioned American thing in a way. Mm-hmm. It was great. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. And, and I still remember going to the drive-ins back in the day too. And the, there was one in West Virginia that still runs. They had like the ones from the sixties, like the intermissions, like get your candy, get your popcorn. It's like, you know, the, right. the, the dancing uh, can- candy, candy bars or um, ice cream cones and uh, soda drinks. And all. I'm like, everybody's laughing. It's like, this is like part of Americana, like from the fifties and sixties. I was like a subtle way of saying, Hey, it's like, we're taking a break. We're changing the film, make everybody go to the bathroom. And in the meantime, you know, Come, come, come! Get your uh, food before uh, the film starts. I mean, I still remember those cartoons. They're great. That's right. And here's, but here's the amazing thing: the one I went to, so the the Queen's Corona Drive-In that was screening some of the Twelve Monkeys. The amazing, the amazing thing was that the uh, the food vendors it was it was it was Thai food. You could get you could get amazing like pork buns and um, steamed, steamed, you know, all kinds of all kinds of Asian specialties too. So it was like a real like panoply of New York, the New York scene. Like you could get. Thai food, popcorn, soda, and uh, you know, so it was a little bit of the old, a little bit of the new, kind of COVID coping. <laughs> what I call it. I, I can imagine vendors going around, Thai food, Thai food, yeah, Thai food, Thai food. <laughs> it was really, it was cool. I was into it. Thai food, Thai food. <laughs> And also, you've been a director as well, too. Maybe just uh, yes. tell a bit as well, too. And um, you also, um, you know, venture into singing songwriter. But first, uh, you also directed some films and maybe just um, a bit more ventures, too, including um, being on Broadway's and Hair of the Wind and more. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I'm, a, you know, I, I think making music is a lot like putting on a play. You know, you get a band, rehearse, you got to tell a story, you have your script, you, you, you go along. And then you're putting on a show. Ultimately, you're in service to the audience. So it's got to, that's how it all comes together. You know, you're trying to make something that hopefully, if you're lucky, people can relate to. And that's, uh, you know, so I guess, yes, I have a lot of experience doing those things. And, uh, you know, I feel fortunate that I'm able to to, to, to tap into something here um, every now and again that makes, uh, makes, makes for, makes you, makes you, Makes you smile, I guess, mm-hmm. <laughs> or or feel something. I guess that's that exactly. smile. You're not going to do that all the time. And of course, you also uh, touched on the thing as well too. You got into songwriting during the pandemic, and you also got that song uh, "Look Out" by a Chelly Girl. And uh, we'll talk more about that um, after right. a break, and maybe a little bit uh, some of the songs you also have out there as as well too. Maybe we can also discuss. Love to. Okay. All right. Oh. No, I'm talking about some of the other songs uh, besides. Oh, some uh, of my, my, my other songs, yeah. Besides, besides, look out. Um, yeah, this is uh, well, you know, this I've started releasing songs during the pandemic. My first song is actually called "King of Corona." It was it was about my experience with Corona, which is, a t- you know, seems writing a song about about coronavirus is kind of a tough chore, and uh, you know, to do something that wasn't cheap and obvious was was not so easy, I suppose. 
but nonetheless, you know, I had I had a very dislocating experience, and I wrote a a song about 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 that sense of isolation, but but also about how surreal life became. I mean, you know, connecting with people on FaceTime and and having you know it's like day for night, like a, like a movie, like a, like life got turned upside down on a dime when this thing hit us. I mean, who knew? Who could, would have imagined in February? of 2020, that in March of 2020, this onslaught was gonna close our schools, lock us down and, and, and kill half a million Americans and that we would have to survive this. It's a remarkable thing. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm grateful that we're coming to the other side. I hope we're on the other side of it. Tough time for a lot of people. Um, you know, for me, luckily it's been a creatively fertile time because I took up songwriting in the absence of my collaborators and, uh, you know, tried to make the most of it, but um, mm-hmm. that's where I stand with it. So that's where I really got into songwriting. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have took up songwriting and some other ventures too, like with Zoom projects, YouTube and uh, everything else. 100%. And also a good portion of jobs also got lost during the pandemic too. So so yep. it was where it's, um, it, it turned out to be a good thing for uh, most people. Where it's like they may have lost their job on some, but they also picked up as well too. And um, it, it it's almost like we're pretty much a part of the majority that you lose something, but then you pick up and um, it becomes something better than you expected. That's very much, I, you know, I think that's true. And, you know, my new lookout very much speaks to that. I think there's a certain optimism that comes out of going through any intense experience, whether it's, whether it's painful or jubilant, that, that, that is completely, uh, you know, re- renewing and, and, it's important to, to acknowledge that and to, to, to find some way to, to, to experience that is really helps you get through what is the tough times. Mm-hmm. And it does too. You also got one of your uh, big singles out as well too. That's on streaming platforms. Look out bad. Shelly girl will be playing that at the end of the um, audio interview on the Mike Widener show. Tell us more about the song uh, look out bad Chili girl and what inspired you to write it. I'll be glad to. Um, I was, uh, well, you know, this, this, this song was, uh, first came the museums were shut down and I, I, I studied history in college and love art. I go to museums to, to find peace a lot. And I was wandering through and looking at all the old master paintings. I thought about that Botticelli painting, the birth of Venus. And I was like, ah, Botticelli girl. It's kind of a catchy title, but I was like, Oh, that has a nice ring to it. Like, I really thought it's got a ring to it. I just thought there was something there, but then I, you know, found myself reflecting on, renewal and the calm that I was feeling and the optimism that I was feeling having moved through a very intense experience over the last few years and with the, going through COVID. And, and that's where, the, that's where the, the seed of the song came from. And the song is kind of a reflection on, on, on not letting life go by unnoticed, really. Mm-hmm. And the things change. And the juxtaposing that with the painting, which is always fixed, you know, the painting will never change, but <laughs> life changes. And that's kind of the, you know, the song, the song is both, it, you know, it's, it's somber, but it's also speaks to this renewal of, 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 the inta- of, of not letting something cherished go by unnoticed. Mm-hmm. And that's very true as well, too. And where can we find a uh, look out by Chili Girl and uh, some of your other works at? Uh, well, they're all up on the platforms that we're talking about. Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, uh, my website, youngallies.com, which is uh, my personal world on the corner of the internet, my YouTube channel, Fritz Michel. And uh, yeah, remember my name, F-R-I-T-Z-M-I-C-H-E-L. Fritz like the cat, Michel mm-hmm. yes. like the French yeah. name. Yeah, one one of my favorite uh, cat cartoons as well. Fritz a cat, so amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic, right? <laughs> oh yeah, and of course I have him stick in front of you while while you're um working on another building. It's like, can we see a cat? Yeah, we'll we'll check a live one. So, and what's coming up for uh, Fritz Michelle in uh, 2021? Yeah, we'll find out in just a minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at soundcrabstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, International War Ring author Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the amazing multi talented Fritz Michelle after this timeout. We're back with the amazing multi talented uh, singer, songwriter, dramaturg, and director. Fritz Michel of New York City here on the Mike Wagner Show. We covered a lot about his amazing career and courses, um, new single, Look Out by Chili Girl and more. And what else can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond, Fritz? Well, you know, I'm, I'm really 
what I'm really looking forward to is getting back out in the world and seeing people playing live, playing these songs. You know, interestingly enough, these songs were came came out of the pandemic, so I haven't really played them live with with in with an audience. So it's I can't wait to really get back out there and and see and see where they're at. I mean, you know, because that's part. You know, music is such a, a conversation, and it, like we, you and I were talking earlier, so much of the experience is in the listening and. I'm looking forward to sharing these stories with with other people in a way that's not digital. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. And uh, as we're all tiptoeing back out into the world here, um, it's, it's a lot to be looking forward to, I think. And and certainly will do so. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? In my career? Yes. The single biggest influence. Wow, I would have to say, God, that's a big thing. Um, I don't know, do I... Do I if I was to say uh, my kids, my father, I mean, the people closest to me, I mean, those are, those are gigantic influences, people who guide you every day. Um, and I would probably have to say probably on the spectrum, one of those two, one of those, you know, my parents or my children, because ultimately those are the people who we share our stories with the clo- are the closest are, and that's the, that's the way life goes, right? You know, we come in, come in one way, go out another and, um, the people who help you get get there are the ones who probably tell your story and hear you the most. Mm -hmm. And that's very fascinating. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? At this point, I would say, keep on listening, listening to people. You know, that's every, everything that I've learned in life is someone else probably told me, I don't think it's anything particularly special about me other than I like to, I like to talk to people. I like to listen. I like to hear their stories and, I get lucky, you know, share them in some way. Mm -hmm. And that's very important too. Listening, that's all we need as well. And that's very important. Once again, we're with the multi-talented Fritz Michelle here on the Mike Widener Show, singer, songwriter, drama tour, and actor based out of New York on the Mike Widener Show. Fritz, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back on 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact, where can people uh purchase or check out your music um well again just go you can find me anywhere throw my name into google search and you'll will uh you'll find it spotify soundcloud apple music and uh youngallies.com and just remember my name fritz like the cat and uh michelle we like cert- the name we certainly will do so once again fritz a very big thank you for your time you've been absolutely amazing looking forward to having you again soon do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2020 and beyond. And don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. Super cool. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.